There's plenty of weapons, builds, and players in game, with many build varieties that have advantages and disadvantages. Some builds will be better or worse depending on the player and the map. However, all builds need to help yourself survive against hundreds of cops. This is why your weapons and skill choices are priority, as well as clicking your mouse to kill them. So we got a little example here with First World Bank Vault. Can you see the loot? Great, let's go grab it. However, let's say there's enemies in the way. Well, you're not going to go around them or you're going to hide from them. It's quite simple. Your weapons and your build choice needs to come as a priority. So if we have a sniper set up and we take the rattlesnake, for example, applying grays to the enemies just to clear the space and we're good to go. Now we can loot and repeat the same cycle over and over again. I mean, it's pretty simple. You see cop, you shoot, you loot, and you repeat. So anyways, I'm not going over how to build your weapon on this video here, as I have tons of build videos and lectures already. So if you ain't killing cops fast or efficiently, you need to fix that now. So get good and start shooting cops. Once your build and weapon have the correct skills, such as sniper skills, shotgun skills, or pistol skills, maybe some body expertise with low blow, unseen crits, or berserker for more damage, then you should be ready to handle anything that comes your way. Once you're comfortable with your build and weapon setup, where would you throw any leftover points? This is where team skills come into play. What will work best for you and three other players you're with? Team skills would be bringing skills to help yourself and others have higher success within games. These typically wouldn't be survival skills like hostage taker or any dodge or even bullseye as they help your build regardless. Team skills would be more beneficial for everyone or help complete objectives faster. I had an old video explaining why Inspire isn't priority and your build should be. So this will be more detail and what skills are best for team play. Let's get started. Something simple for everyone. Place one of these down and you got resources around the ground. Med bags can be placed ahead of time in spots of cover or wherever folks will be around the map the most. Revive someone where they died and they can run to the meds on the spot and get their downs restored without the worry of them in custody. With the ace variant, it just means more charges. In a typical match, two or three aced med bags is more than enough for the average team. First aid kits, however, don't restore the downs, but they can be used more aggressively. Whether you're forcing objectives or pulling aggro, making kills around a corner, these with upper ace will save your HP whenever it hits zero, even when falling to the ground. Otherwise, if you need a quick fix, these will fill your HP up. Just if you use one that isn't yours or you accidentally get uppers procced, just make sure to say something in chat so they can replace it. Otherwise, they could go down without even knowing and that could be a problem. Now, with ammo, some weapons don't have great pickup from dead enemies. Having ammo bags will help you fix that, as well as prevent running into the open, grabbing more bullets that puts you in danger. It also helps other team members refill guns if there's a need for a big push as a group. Ammo bags always come in handy for that. However, all ammo bag users are going to equip Bullet Storm, which is a very strong skill for clearing hordes of cops. If the last part of the bag is used, it will give 60 seconds of infinite ammo, assuming it's the Ace variant. In any circumstance, if that's not your ammo, do not take that last portion. Save it for the user who put that ammo down. That's part of their DPS in their build. Ammo is for the team. Bullet Storm is their need. If you accidentally take their Bullet Storm, just at least apologize or make the decency to get a lot of kills from it. Jack of all trades gives faster interactions with deployables as well as bringing another deployable. However, the secondary will be halved. So if your build includes two med bags, the secondary deployable will be one. This makes great for secondary ammo, secondary meds, or that fancy ordnance bag for more throwables. Now onto objective based stuff. If you just want to take a break of killing endless cops, you can probably help the team with lock picking doors or cabinets a little bit faster. Now, this can save your secondary weapon slot or equipment for shape charges, but I don't think lockpicking is the best and it isn't needed on all heists. It's more of a nice to have around, as you should clear the area ahead of time or wait for an assault to fade over, and then you could start lockpicking the door. Just don't make the same mistake and I did, and just remember to kill whatever comes after that door. 
Drill skills are pretty straightforward. Drill Sergeant Aced for faster drills works great on longer drills, say biker heist, slaughterhouse, or any thermal drills for other heists. I wouldn't put Kickstarter here for the chance to fix broken drills as a team skill, as the RNG isn't consistent, and it is always best to clear the area when approaching the drill in the first place. Also, it's too expensive for what it is worth while not all heists have drills anyways. And if you're repairing them, they already have quite a bit of cover next to them, and if team members are killing stuff around the area. Now, instead of drills or lock picking, a great choice is the portable saw. You can knock those pesky objectives or doors out of your way. The primary saw doesn't need the skill portable saw, but the majority of primary weapons are way better than secondaries. You can have a rifle, LMG, sniper, or akimbos, and with two points, you can take a lot of worry off your team by knocking doors down with that secondary saw. And if you plan on sawing a lot of cages for a bank or several doors, acing this skill gives longer lasting saws and another saw blade to reload with. Now, what about C4 or those funny shaped charges? There is a skill called more firepower, but I can't necessarily say this is a team-based skill. The equipment that you get to deploy with, with the three shaped charges, is more than enough for the average heist amongst every heist in the game. So you basically only need three to take care of most objectives. And there's always the portable saw option. The only exclusion perhaps I can give is maybe Hoxton Breakout Day 2. And that map involves a lot of killing anyways. And you gotta wait for Hoxton to do his objectives anyways. So, is more firepower more of a team-based skill? Not necessarily. All right, time for the fun stuff. We got support. Now for the true team-related stuff that everyone wants. You know, inspire and nothing else. But there are better alternatives. Ever tried sentries? They're the best for holding out objectives, say a drill for a bank or massive buildings in Reservoir Dogs, for example. Putting sentries in corner parts of the map can protect their flanks and make them really strong. What sentries can do is pull aggro from teammates and shoot cops in the process. Someone could argue C4 placed around the map could do the same thing, but it doesn't offer that wide area to attract cops or shoot them farther than what C4 would be placed by. But hey, you want something easier and better? It's called jokers. Why not convert a cop instead? Massive health pool, shoots other cops, takes aggro from other cops, and gives health and speed bonuses too. Personally, it is the best team skill in the game. However, they are only the best if you have partners in crime to ace. So please, make sure to grab that when getting jokers for your team. I cannot stress how good jokers are good for yourself and other teammates. You can completely ignore all obstacles, cover, and hold W if you have a full party with them making the game on easy mode, and for how cheap the skill points are, it's crazy good. Similar to C4, ECM do have a play for team skills. They can convert turrets when placed down by others. With ECM specialists, you get two ECMs. You can increase their jamming timers with the aced variant of ECM specialist or ECM overdrive. If you interact with the ECM that was placed, you can initiate feedback which will stun cops line of sight of that ECM, similar to the hacker perk deck. This is better than what a concussion throwable could produce buying yourself and your team time to push objectives or go from cover to cover. Now for everyone's favorite, Inspire. 28 points to instantly get one of your down teammates back on their feet. Yes, it's great, but it's only ever used if they go down. So it can't be the best team skill. But the basic version for 20 points can make others run faster or reload faster. It also helps for pushing, you know, from cover to cover or moving lots of loot. So don't forget to F your teammates if you bring Inspire. But again, Inspire is not priority. Your build and weapons are. If anyone argues this, please send them to this video for intense lecture material part two hosted by me. But if you do want to bring Ace Inspire, just a quick note, please clear the area where the teammate was. Make some space killing cops and get them up. Inspire Ace with painkillers will also help tremendously for this. Lastly for support is offensive based, high value target. 
It does help builds for more damage onto highlighted specials in a darker red highlight, but teammates also get that damage bonus too. Even more so, if there's a lot of smoke grenades tossed by tasers or cloakers, or if the area is covered in green gas grenades and you can't see a thing, this skill, you can right click and do a quick scan. This will help you find any highlighted specials past that, you know, stuff you can't really see well. This also helps sniper users get wall bang on enemies on certain maps. And lastly, if you run out of bullets or need to move in to another spot, and if you highlighted a special, another teammate can easily spot that threat and help take them out. All right, time for the clutch section or <laughs> the controversial section. Eh, maybe that might have been a better name for this. Let's start with something simple, nine lives. Now, this wouldn't be a team skill if no one ever goes down, but I still make mistakes and it happens to others. Or if someone throws a terrible inspire at you, another life can prevent that custody. So why is nine lives a team-based skill? Well, it saves resources on meds. So other team members aren't chewing up medic bags like crazy. Pretty simple. I don't have to go over that in detail. More med charges means longer lasting medic bags. Ultimately, less worry for others placing another med bag for a quick fix. <laughs> just please run painkillers. Now, just a quick disclaimer before I get too crazy into the other four skills. These aren't damage skills, these aren't survival skills, but they have some element of team play within them. However, in order for them to work, you need to get down by enemies, which doesn't exactly mean they're great for other team members. So are these truly team skills? They can help with resources, objectives, and support if they're done correctly. So instead of overextending shooting cops in the open, they're more suited for clutch scenarios that can revive other players in odd spots or get yourself into a better position for a revive or push objectives that can get yourself back to the team easily. Hence, we all know the infamous teamwork build, right? So with Stockholm Syndrome, Swan Song, Fain Death, and Messiah, you can push yourself out a little more with some backup without making your team worry too much. However, I still consider these skills bad in my books and a lot of other players too, as they require you to go down. So, you know, a better build can prevent downs in the first place. So, using these skills kind of encourages bad playstyle, so don't get in the habit of playing like this. But if you want a fun time, so just stack in these skills with Leech as the self-revive gives Messiah and Feign Death another reroll when using the ampule. Stockholm Syndrome is where you refuse to make jokers, but you want to make hostages instead? Coming back into a team fight from custody sounds good on paper, but in practice it puts you into a lot of risk. If you come back and your teammates are also downed or in custody, then the skill is useless because you're more likely to go down with them. Jokers can prevent these scenarios for the same skill points. However, as I said before, if done correctly, Stockholm can help the team. At least get yourself into a better position when coming back to do trades or finish the assault, not to throw yourself again. Swansong has a lot of utility for how cheap it can be. Six seconds of slow movement can get you behind cover for a teammate to revive you, or if you want to make a desperate revive for someone else. You can hard finish objectives or have infinite ammo to shoot with. Just because Swansong gives a lot of utility, the six seconds is best used to plan what to do next. Main death is RNG to get yourself back up from being downed. Now, that can save your teammate running towards you to get yourself back up, but for how terrible this thing costs, it's not worth it by any means. You can't control your own downs when you really need the skill to work. Again, a better build means less downs. And finally, Messiah is the more consistent Fain Death. But you need to get a kill in bleed out phase when you're not knocked out. But in majority of cases, cops tend to knock you out completely while you're bleeding out. So it doesn't give you a frequent or consistent chance of coming back. So if you want to make the best out of this, you can use rockets, grenade launchers, or high damage rifles, and hopefully you can get yourself back up. But again, you shouldn't be relying on this in the first place. It's more of a backup or a clutch scenario to begin with. Alrighty, that's a lot to take in, but hey, like I said before, Inspire is not a priority. Or any other team skills, your build is. So make sure you're comfortable with your weapon choice and the skill points needed to make them amazing. 
Some people may need more skill points to make their weapons strong. Some people may need less. Whatever works for you. When it comes to team skills, they are awesome to see when other players are using them within games. But they will be completely useless if the player using them continues to die to cops or goes into custody. So again, make sure your weapons and yourself are ready first. So I came up with a little bit of a tier list, and it would look something like this. As hinted in the video, the Jokers, especially with Partners in Crime Aced, is probably the best team skill out there. Can't tell you how consistent and easy and how cheap that skill becomes, and it creates so many benefits for everyone amongst the team. Next up would be probably ammo and uh, those first aid kits with uppers procced. Everything else below is definitely a nice to have and it saves quite a bit of time, but not as much as, well, the fun that Bulletstorm or Jokers come to play with. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry for any Nimble fans out there. A portable saw can completely replace that and do much more. These team-based skills are basically more of an afterthought once again. So don't prioritize on Inspire first or the majority of these skills in the first place. Unless your build really needs ammo, then I guess just make sure to tell your teammates not to take that bullet storm. Anyways, enough rambling. I hope this helps as a lot of players think Inspire is priority and it freaking isn't. <laughs> Until then, I'll see you next time.